What's up everybody? Welcome to what is sure to be one of the craziest episodes of BS for Build ever because this car behind me has to leave for California in two days. Let's get started. Before I can really worry about the fabrication that needs to happen under the hood and also including mounting the hood and the fenders and the headlights and all that other good stuff that has to happen up front, uh, we gotta fix up this paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand this back down, give it a coat of primer and then repaint this front end uh, and hopefully we won't have any mistakes this time. Literally seconds after I started sanding, this build took a turn down what the hell road. I, uh, I, I, like I mentioned in a previous episode, I wanted to have a professional windshield installer come install this windshield because they're very, very expensive and I didn't want to risk uh, breaking it at such a crucial time. So he comes and he looks at that and he looks at the new glass and he goes, uh, these are different windshields. And I went, no shit. <laughs> They are indeed different windshields. I got one from a convertible and my car is a coupe. And convertible trim lines and stuff are often different. So, here's where I stand. I really want to take this car to California. I thought I had time to do it if I had a professional windshield installer come install the window. Um, I, uh, I, I, I don't have time to get another windshield. The closest one is in Seattle, which is a four hour drive away. Drive there back, even if they had one in stock and just gave it to me, I threw it in the back of my truck, got it back without breaking it. Uh, that would burn all day and then it wouldn't be possible. So I still really wanna take this car down to California. I have a windshield for a car that I'm not gonna use. Here's my thought. I'm gonna measure the hole and see how far off it is. And if it's possible, I'm just gonna glue the sucker in there because it's worthless to me either way. I could sell it secondhand, yes, that would be fine. But what I'd like to do is if possible, glue the sucker in there and then drive to California and drive it back. And then when I get back, get the proper windshield put in. This sounds like BS for Build now, right? So uh, this is me panicking. I'm gonna grab out a measuring tape. I'm gonna do some measuring. And then if things look like they're even somewhat close, then I'll do like a layover and we'll test it and see if it can, uh, if it can sit in the hole correctly, if the bend is the same shape. And, uh, and we'll go from there. But the odds that a convertible windshield are the same as the coupe and just barely tweaked are not likely. But fingers crossed. was off the rails there for a second. I feel like we're not quite back on the rails yet, but we're coming around that corner and the train's either gonna tip over soon or we'll, we'll continue on down the tracks. Here's what's going on. I test laid that windshield down right over the other windshield. Um, and as I thought, British are lazy when it comes to these things or ingenuitive, whatever. They just shaved the corners of the windshield down a little bit. It's the same shape, it's the same form, it's got the same side lines, it's got the same under tray and it looks like it has the same roof line, except it may be a touch higher at the top. But really all I'm seeing is it looks like it might just be like a perfect fit with some shaved down corners. So what I did then was I measured the amount of metal that's there on the roof available for the windshield to grab onto, and there is metal there. There's enough metal that even with the rounded corners, it'll catch on the metal, meaning we'll have a full seal all the way around. At least I think so, but you know what? To make this car get down to California and to do this trip, I'm willing to risk it. I'm willing to figure it out. I don't give two shits about that that uh, that used pulled windshield. If it doesn't work for me, I'm not gonna, how am I gonna sell it? I don't sell parts. So what I've done is I've hired a windshield installer to uninstall that windshield because it is an extremely hard piece of glass to get out of the car. And if I did it, I know I would scratch the hell out of the car and it would take me all day, which I don't have. So he's gonna come down in the next hour. He's gonna pull that windshield out. I'm gonna zip my lips. I'm not gonna tell him that I'm installing the wrong windshield. He's gonna leave. Then I'm gonna test it the wrong windshield, see if it, it does indeed fit. And I was right about my edges and everything else like that. It will plop it in there. And if it doesn't fit, then all this is for nothing and uh, the build goes on hold and I have to go pick a different car to take down to California, which could be cool too. So uh, it's gonna get really exciting. And having said all that, now it's time to continue working like nothing ever happened because I have to get the other stuff done regardless. So I'm going to start sanding on the front of the car like I was before. We're gonna sand off all this bad paint and then we're gonna get the good paint on there. Whew. Got 
Got the front bumper all sanded up, that's ready to be primed, and we have no windshield. It is now the placement, the test placement moment of faith. Let's see if that windshield will fit in the car. Okay guys, well I think it's possible. The contour is exactly the right shape, so that's a good thing. That it's It doesn't have any like, it doesn't have a different shape to it. Uh, but there are some differences and limitations here. So this is slid a little bit further down. Right now it's as far down as it can go. And then we're really, really tight up here. But I think it'll go down the rest of the way. Right now it's actually just sitting on its own um, rubber gasketing. And then what you see here is it kind of dives down um, where the other one would go up flush. And uh, so what I would do is I'll just fill that with polyurethane and the rest with polyurethane and then at least we'll have a windshield on a car. So, uh, I gotta do two things now. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta adhere this wind, windshield and I gotta finish painting in the front. Um, I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is leave the windshield where it's at, spray, it with pri spray this with primer. While the primer's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and um, remove some of the excess rubber uh, from the windshield and from the surface of the car. That way uh, we can get that window to slot down in there and not sit up so high. I think this is gonna work, guys. I think this is still possible to drive this car out of here in a couple days. It's a beast for built spirit and a Christmas miracle. The windshield is too long by my approximation by about one eighth of an inch or less. There's only one reasonable fix for this. Sand the windshield. Windshields are made out of glass and glass is made out of sand. Therefore, by the rules of science, nothing can go wrong. You guys are not gonna believe this, but it fits. By the power of God in anime, that fits. It's a little little tighter than they probably designed it. And it's a little higher up right now because there's still a little bit of molding stuff in here. But I am gonna mount it a little higher because it's gonna give it the most amount of wiggle room. So, uh, so it's pretty close down there and it's pretty close up there. So by my measurement, if the car flexes too much, it'll snap this windshield in half, but maybe not. I, you know what? It's in there, it's in there. It's one of the sketchier things we've ever done. I'm obviously gonna replace this windshield as soon as possible, but to get us down to California, I'm calling that a windshield. I'll mount that in there tomorrow. Uh, for today, I got the bumper prepped. Bumper is looking good, that's ready to be sprayed. The hood uh, needs a little bit of work. So let's sand down this hood, give it a little bit of attention, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, I got all those crazy crinkle wrinkle marks out of the paint. I sanded down a primer and laid another coat of primer on there. Uh, it just needs one quick like touch over with some 600 to smooth it out before we paint, but we're basically ready to paint that. And the bumper's ready to paint. What the hell? Ho, ho, ho. I'm Conan Claus. Rumor at the North Pole is, you pussy down on your wide body kit. Now you need new wheels. I mean, yeah, that's true, but did you see? I just sanded a windshield down to make it fit. Sounds dumb as hell to me. Anyways, here you go. Well, that's pretty sweet. We got some new wheels. Let's check them out. Oh, not, not again. Ho, ho, ho. I'm Aston Martin Claus. Oh, sweet, Aston Martin Claus. Did you come to bring me the right windshield? Nope, I'm just here to take these. Um, kind of saving you from yourself here. Uh, Merry Christmas. All right, now that those jokers are gone, we can get down to business. Uh, these are our new Koenig wheels provided by Koenig Claws at immediate rush shipping so we can get done in time. 
Um, these are eight and a halfs over here and nine and a halfs over here for the rear, and they are the same centigrams just with different offsets so they won't hang out past the fenders. Every time you get new wheels, you got to test mount before you go get tires put on them. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the wheels off of the car and test mount these new ones on there. Looking great. I'm super stoked on these. I think the color combo is going to look great. We need to get a tiny little spacer in the front uh, for the two front wheels because they're clipping the brake calipers right now. They have absolutely massive brake calipers on this car. So uh, I'll get a tiny little spacer. There's plenty of thread depth on this wheel to get the spacer in there. So we'll be good to go that way. Huge thanks to Koenig Wheels. Um, I messaged them in a total panic. Like I was like, the wheels you guys gave me now that I'm not going wide body, they're hanging out way over the car. I'm trying to have it done in four days and they rush shipped me another set. So huge thanks to them for saving um, what chance I have, what little chance left I have of getting this thing done in time. Uh, it means the world to me. So check out their koenigwheels.com. I'll throw a link in the description. You guys check it out. Please share the support. All right, it's time to get all the wheels off the car, throw them in the truck, get these in the truck. Uh, that way I can get tires put on them tomorrow and then paint the front of this car. Well, this is really frustrating. The bumper looks okay. It's ready for its third coat, but we're on our second coat. And uh, looking at the hood, you can see the beginning marks of where it wants to crinkle. You can see how it wants to do it. I don't know what it is, but I moved the heater to be a little bit closer to it. I'm gonna give it a little bit more time. It is slick to the touch. That's what you wanna see to be able to spray your next coat. But you can see some marks between where you have primer and hood, and I gotta get rid of those. So it's going to need its third coat. Normally, I would sit here in the shop and freak out about this paint for the next few hours, but my family is doing Christmas stuff, so I got to head out. We'll see tomorrow how it looks. Fingers crossed. I think we got this one. I think so. Good morning! It's early, it's early. Family Christmas went great. My parents bought me a Lamborghini so I could be an official YouTuber, so I'm super stoked on that. Um, and the paint came out great. Came out great. We got no more of those crazy reactions. I think what it is was it was just too cold. And then if you sprayed paint down there and it hadn't fully kind of dried up on you, and then imagine spraying, you got that tank full of freezing cold air and, you might, and then you spray right over that next coat with that super cold air and it just, sent everything to shit. I think that's what the problem was, is it was just too cold. Cause I've never had a problem like that before. And uh, we adding the heat and stuff seemed to be the solution. So it's great. It blended in with the hood nicely. That is one really nice thing about spraying a base coat like this is it's very easy to blend. And that's something to keep in mind. If I do start drifting this car and keep nicking it and scratching it and stuff like that, uh, this paint's super easy to blend into itself. So. Paint's done. I'm so glad that that got fixed up. Now it's time to focus on the windshield. Chelsea is on her way to give me some help with that, uh, with mounting and installing that. Um, so what I gotta do is prep the rubber. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim down the rubber about an extra half an inch on the sides and the bottom. The top is already done and that'll give it a little bit more room to set in there. We nailed it. I do say I think BS for Build is the leader in installing wrong windshields on the wrong car technology. Um, what we did is we obviously uh, glued it in there like you normally would and then we basically made a fill piece right here and then put Windex on our fingers and kind of smoothed it out and Chelsea did a really good job of smoothing these things out. I'll show you more when it dries but it looks fantastic and it's really like at this point, I still got to get it replaced as soon as I can, but at this point, it, it, it ain't bad. It, it is not bad. No one's going to look at this car and go, oh, you have the wrong windshield. So that's pretty amazing.
All right, moving forward, I got tires put on the wheels, so I'm gonna bring those in, put the wheel spacers on the front wheels, install all the wheels all the way around, then we can lower the car down. And meanwhile, Chelsea is gonna be working on masking off that chrome trim so we can paint that. Chelsea got the whole car masked up and she is laying the Plasti Dip on the trim. I decided to go with Plasti Dip on this uh, chrome trim just because it would be some like an interesting way to experiment with it and learn about it for the first time. So they recommend doing one light coat and then five uh, medium coats. So that's what we're in the process of doing right now. She's gonna go ahead and bust out that side and that side. And then I'm over here. I went ahead and clear coated the um, entire core support and impact bar and laid an extra coat of black on our oil cooler. And now I'm just buttoning things up, adding a couple bolts, tightening things down and uh, getting ready to place the radiator. And uh, I also need to install some radiator fans on our radiator. I totally forgot to mention that we got our wheels on. So I got tires put on the wheels this morning. They're on the car, they look great. Thanks so much again to Koenig for uh, Rush shipping those to us. I got the radiator fans on there, the radiator back in there. That's all good to go and we're starting to button up that stuff. And then Chelsea has sprayed the Plasti Dip all over this stuff. We've given it some amount of time to dry. So we're gonna go ahead and take the masking off and then let it fully dry. Well, that looks a whole lot better than the chrome. Uh, I will say though that um, we're in a pretty cold environment. I'm sure I've complained about that plenty in the last few episodes and this stuff with how many coats you need to apply to it, probably not a good idea if you're in a cold environment. It's probably better to use some sort of paint that has a little bit faster coverage so you can get it in two coats or something like that. Uh, we got, because it was so cold, we got a little pooling under the masking tape right here. That's the worst part of it. And what we'll do though is because this is Plasti Dip, it's removable, we'll come in with a razor blade and try and fish that out later on. Um, and that'll get that detailed spot. But overall, it's pretty cool. And I'm hoping because it is Plasti Dip and it's a rubber and stuff like that, if rather than like dings and stuff, chipping paint off of here, I'm hoping that it will um, stay on the chrome a little bit better and uh, and hang on to the car as we get in and out of it and use it and stuff like that. So that's cool. Um, moving on to the next thing, while I have Chelsea here, that took, that took forever to do that, by the way, to mask all that off and paint that. Uh, while I have Chelsea here, we're gonna go ahead and close the hood and test with the body panels. We're try, gonna try and get everything to like line up nicely, install the spacers and install the body panels and get them all uh, lined up properly. Man, this car is coming together so nicely. I am, I am really, really, really getting excited about this. So uh, I, for the first time, have the fenders actually bolted on tightly, and uh, that's to keep my kind of two body lines, get that hood centered, and now we're gonna continue working on the hood. Uh, what I need to do is this hood doesn't have a latching mechanism. We had one on the other hood that was damaged, and what we didn't get when we got the car was the whole piece of the car that included the whole receiving end of that hood latch. So I decided pretty early on that I wanted to do uh, hood pins rather than having the traditional boring old hood latch. I thought hood pins would kind of set it off a little bit extra. So I have these, uh, these are arrow catch um, hood pins uh, and they are, um, you know, I don't know, they're, race inspired, they're flush mount hood pins, and they're, they're pretty cool. I've installed them on other cars before. Uh, over age, they, they can get a little sketchy, but for the most part, they're pretty good. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install these now on the hood, now that I have the hood in the spot that I want it. I think they're gonna go just a little bit past the Aston Martin badge. So the hard part of this is centering everything up exactly perfect, getting it 100% square. Uh, so you'll see me using a lot of blue tape as a guide and measuring and everything else like that. And then uh, I'll cut, cut some holes in the hood and uh, let you guys know how it goes. These 
these are my new racing stripes, guys. I'm liking them. They're called measuring stripes. Uh, so what I actually did was I, I went ahead and used the masking tape as a measuring tool, kind of. Uh, and what I did was, like, I knew, for instance, I wanted it roughly about two inches higher than the Aston Martin logo, so I laid down two strips of tape, measured from side to side, made sure we're dead. Same amount from side to side uh, away from the... Um, front of the the hood and then i followed the body lines over here it's it's that body line there the side one not not the other one you can kind of see it better actually over there you follow the body lines in and then you know spaced everything out from the outside and that gave me a little bit closer point to where i could actually pinpoint a measurement and measure these places exactly in the middle of that so now i have two equally placed little things and it's time to cut them out and i would love to cut them out but i can't it's too late and we have a flat tire on the car. So my hopes of getting this car uh, down to San Francisco tomorrow night are, are shot. So I'm sorry to you guys uh, that saw on the Instagram and stuff that I was planning on being in San Francisco for a meet. Here's what I'm gonna try and do. On my way back home from California, I'm gonna try and stop over in San Francisco and do a meet for you guys. But don't hate me if I don't because it's actually quite a ways out of the way. But I will really try, I will really try. You guys should hope for a bunch of snow on the mountains so I go San Francisco beach back home. Sorry to all you guys that are like in a different country, like what the hell is he talking about? So this is where I'm gonna uh, end the episode. I have one more day to finish the car, so we have to get it. What happened was is they didn't, they didn't pressure test the tires when they did them. I went to the Geno tire shop, which I always go to because I'm cheap, and they didn't uh, test them, so one of them probably has like a valve stem leak or something like that, and tomorrow's a Sunday, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get that fixed on a Sunday. But we'll get that fixed up, and in the next episode, we will mount these hood pins and mount the hood and finish the car and drive it away into the sunset, and it will be magical. Can you guys believe that I mounted the wrong windshield into this car? It's, it's only temporary, but I did it. I, I, don't, I guess I probably shouldn't be too proud of that, but I'm really proud of that. I'm really digging that. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to grab our merch, grab our merch. It's abusefrombuild.com. If you want to find us in more places, head over to Instagram, Snapchat, Twitch, uh, you know, other websites, and type in BS for Build and see if we're on there. I bet we are. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Turns out liking and subscribing does nothing anymore, so watch the video twice, and uh, have a Merry Christmas. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace!